guys, it's Dina Rennick here with another art lesson. This one is a combination of Jamboard and a free photo editing website online called Photopea. And I'm going to show you how to do what I've done here. You are going to upload a regular color photograph of yourself. Then you're going to turn it into a black and white photograph. And then you're going to increase the values. And let me just zoom in here to show you the difference. So here's the color photo. Here's the black and white photo, and then here is the third one that has the black and white photo broken down into different levels of value from light to dark. This could be something cool just to do on its own, or for our class, we are going to use it to help us do color theory work. So we're going to pick one of these color schemes and apply it to our third photograph. We're gonna do a value map of our self-portrait and then we're going to assign a color or a value to each one of those and do a digital painting. We've chosen a portrait that is in some way expressing something important about ourselves or about our personality. So far you have your self-portrait photograph that you've chosen and you wanna make it into a black and white photograph. I'm gonna show you a free photo editing program that is similar to Photoshop so that you can edit your artwork for free. So we're gonna open up a new tab and we're gonna put in the website, photop.com. Since it's online, you're gonna to have to save it because once it's gone, if you have an internet go out or something like that, it's gone. So you wanna save it as you work. But the way we're gonna start is we're gonna go up to the top, to the left-hand side and click on File. And then just below that it says New and we're gonna click on New. So now at the top, it's already highlighted. Just type in your title that you want to use. And I'm going to leave all of the dimensions the same and the background still white and click on this long bar here that says create. And so now you should have something that looks like this. This is our background layer and we want to make another layer on top. So we're going to go over, it goes file, edit, image, layer. Click on layer, go down to new, and then over to layer. Click on that. If you look to the right, you'll see now that you have a background layer and a layer one. Now we're gonna import that photo that we already have. So we are gonna go to file, and we are gonna scroll down just three to open in place. And there we are gonna click on our photograph. I double clicked and import it. From here, if I wanted to change where it goes, I could. If I wanted to change the size, I could. If I change the size, I'm, I'm going to hold down Shift and push on my touchpad with my thumb. And then I can change the size without it stretching out the dimensions. If I don't hit on Shift and my hands aren't steady, it might get too wide or too long. If you don't like something, hit Command or Control Z and it will take it back to where it was. So that's how you adjust it. Now I'm going to crop it so that it's only the photograph we want. The reason I don't have us choose a specific size is because everybody might have a different dimension of photograph. So instead we're gonna crop it. Cropping it just gets rid of this white space. If you are gonna import it into Jamboard like I did, you don't want the white space because it will block out other artwork and images on there. So we are gonna crop it we need to select what we want to save first. So we're going to go below file, a couple down, there's a rectangle made out of a dotted line. Rectangle select, click on that. Now your cursor is a little plus sign and you are going to drag a border around what you want to keep and then let go and it creates a dotted line around the outside. So now that's been selected, and then we're gonna go to image at the top. So it goes file, edit, image. Click on image, go down to crop, and click on that. Now it just has what we wanna keep. So now if you look on the right, we have background, layer one, and self-portrait. We wanna have a second layer with our self-portrait so that if we end up not liking what we did or something goes wrong, we can still have that first one on there. We're gonna to go to layer at the top again, but instead of clicking new this time, we're just gonna duplicate the layer. Now, it looks the same, but there's actually, if you look on the right, there's two copies. 
Make sure the top one is the one that's highlighted. That's the one we're working on. Now we're going to turn it into a black and white. So to do that, we go to image. This is a, a good beginner way to turn it into black and white. We're going to go to image, adjustments, and then over on the drop down about halfway, it says black and white, and you're going to click on that and then scooch that out of the way and make sure that it's black and white, and it is, so we're gonna hit OK. Now I'm gonna show you how to save that so you have that black and white version. So we're gonna go to File again, click on it. We are gonna save it a couple different ways. We're gonna save it as a PSD, and you can see I have that highlighted right now. The PSD saves it as an editable file. So you can't use it as an image, but it has all your layers and your steps still in there. So later on, if you get off the website, you can re-import it again and continue working on it. So you want to save it as a PSD and then also go up to File, scroll down just below that to Export As and choose JPEG. Now it looks too big when you click on it, but that's just the real size. It's all there. So click Save and now you have that as a JPEG. You don't have to do this, but I also export it as a PNG, just in case someday I want it to be a PNG. So I do both. Now we have that saved. Now I'm gonna show you how to do the value mapping shortcut. We go back up to image and adjustments, but this time we scroll closer to the bottom to posterize and click on that. We're not gonna hit okay yet. We're gonna scooch this out of the way and you can see that it says three as the level. That means there's three values. There's white, there's middle gray, and there's black. For our purposes, we want more than that. So we could use the slider, or I like the amount of control I have if I click on the slider, but then use my side to side arrows. And that lets me one step at a time see what I want. You want to have enough that it's going to make an interesting painting or interesting photograph. So we want to have enough areas for different values. So I want to make sure that there's a variety of values in each section of my face and my neck and my hair. So I don't want too few for what we're doing, but I don't want too many because then you can't see the different values. So here, if you look, I've got some light areas. I've got the reflection in my eyes, the different levels in my face. I've got several different values of gray. So that looks good, that's 11. And I could choose 10, um, but I kinda like this smaller amount of light space on my face. So I'm gonna keep it at 11 and hit OK. Now it's there. Now I'm going to show you one last thing to make it even easier to see for the next step. So but we're just going to increase the contrast. Go up to image and then to adjustments and this time stay at the top where it says brightness and contrast. Scooch that out, out of the way without hitting OK. If we turn the brightness down it makes some of the darker values even darker. And then if we turn the contrast up it makes the difference between those things even more obvious, which will make for a really nice value map on our face. So if you can see, I turned the contrast up, I turned the brightness down, and now I have a variety of values in all the areas of my face and neck. So you can play with this and you can see how much of a difference you want once you're happy with it, um, but once you're happy with it, click OK. And then you're going to do the same process of saving it as a PSD in case you decide to go back and play with it later, and then also saving it as a JPEG. And again, if you are like me and you want to save it as a PNG for some reason, there you go. Now you're all set and that's, and that's all done. If you also are going to bring yours into Jamboard, I'll show you how to do that as a little extra. So if you go to Jamboard, I'm going to scooch this over. My black and white should be in download, so I'm going to go to the little picture of mountains for add image, select a file, 
go to downloads and I'm going to open up the black and white one first. So there's that. And I'll be adjusting these later. And then again, I'm gonna add another image. of my value mapping one. And there you can see I've got my color one, my black and white, and then my one with all the different levels of values on my self-portrait. Once you're all done with that, you're all set. The next thing we're gonna do in another video we're going to assign values to our self-portrait. We are going to choose our color scheme and then match up the values from our color scheme to the ones on our portrait and turn that into a color scheme self-portrait. So you can think about what colors you're going to want to use and we can make a video about that next. But for this one, you can use any of these as standalone projects or you can introduce them as part of a value mapping exercise or as a digital painting project like my students and I are going to do. If you have any questions or comments, let me know down below. And thank you for watching. I hope it was helpful and that you enjoyed it. If it was, please like, share, and subscribe. And I will talk to you later. Thanks, you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.